Magic in 2023 has come and gone. And I'd be thrilled if you joined me in the inaugural Color Ranking Retrospective. These lists are composed of the most fun spells in each color. As an example, while Orcish Bowmasters is almost certainly the best black spell printed this year, I wouldn't classify the play pattern in the fun category. Breach the Multiverse, on the other hand, is basically gambling, and that wouldn't be addictive if it wasn't so darn fun. Alright, let's get started with white. And as you're watching, let me know in the comments your favorite spell that I missed in your favorite color. Fire Main Commando drives the action of the game forward by rewarding you with a drawn card for attacking and rewarding others for the same. So long as the attack isn't coming toward you. Any deck that plans to be aggressive would be more than happy to have this creature in the roster, and now might be the best time to snag her, because the new Aurelia is going to be released in the Murders at Karlov Manor, and these angels are two peas in a pod. Forge a New is an amazing new piece for equipment decks that lets you first return stuff from the graveyard if you need to, but then make life really hard for your opponents by letting you equip at instant speed for zero mana if it's the first equip. If you're attacking and have two pieces of equipment, one that will kill their blocker and the other that gives you a boon when dealing combat damage to a player, you're sitting real pretty while your opponent is sweating over that blocking choice. Adipose Offering is a card that I don't think got nearly enough love because it was part of the Doctor Who set that I've not seen get much traction. Combine this card with high cost and high toughness creatures that want to die and you're looking at a suddenly very wide board state for as little as one white mana. For example, Sacrifice Torsten, founder of Benalia, to cast this with the Emerge cost. And for next to nothing, you have 8 two twos and 7 one ones on the battlefield. Now, what you choose to do with those bodies is up to you. And look how cute they are! Mondrak Glory Dominus's token doubling has been done before, but goodness me, as soon as this is played, the whole table scoots up in their seats because things just got real. In these token decks where you presumably have some established board state, that indestructible threshold is not hard to meet either, which is doubly frightening. And I'm going to keep it real with you. Everything about Mondrak is cooler than O'Hare Talk, and I'm not sorry for saying it. Real quick, before we hit number one and the rest of the video, please take the next few seconds to hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a ton, and as of recording, we are so close to 1,000 subscribers. Listen, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm getting a homemade cake when that number hits 1,000, and I want to eat that cake. Help a brother out here. You know what to do. Gandalf the White, in my estimation, is the strongest version of Gandalf we received, as it should be. The ETB and LTB effect doubling, alongside the flash ability for legendary spells and artifacts, is super powerful, but also not so inclusive as to be an auto-include in any white deck. You want to be a Legends or Artifacts Matter deck to make Gandalf work the best, and that's a limited enough scope for me to enjoy seeing him pop off in those spaces. Lorien Revealed doesn't rise to the most fun spell, but lets you do the most fun thing of all, which is actually playing magic. That one mana island cycling ability is incredible at fixing your mana base, which will help you limit the amount of mulligans you need, and let you play your spells on curve. Eventually, the need to island cycle will come and go, and the card draw sorcery is a 
totally reasonable action to take at that point. This, again, enables the magic playing experience, giving you spells to cast, as opposed to you sitting around hellbent. Misleading Signpost is a blue mana rock that can punch above its weight class when flashed in after attackers are declared. Depending on the board state, you can run one of your opponent's commanders into another opponent's death touch creature. Or mess with someone's politicking by redirecting an attacking creature to their newly forged allies, Undefended Planeswalker. This spell brings the hijinks. Reverse the Polarity is one of these multi-function cards in which every mode is as cool as the last. There is absolutely a twisted pleasure derived from single-handedly saying no to every last spell built up on a stack. The second mode is Chaos and again can completely screw up one or more players' best laid plans. The last mode is great for you to finish a game with combat damage or help someone else out so they can end someone else's game for you. Shadow Puppeteers was my favorite new spell printed out of both the Wilds of Eldraine precons. While there are plenty of ways to spam out flying fairy creatures, they suffer from very limited power. This spell beefs them up to 4-4 dragons when attacking and features some very impressive shadow art, if I do say so myself. Fairy Mastermind is almost a perfect balance of a super efficient spell that doesn't feel oppressive. After all, you're only being rewarded with that card advantage when your opponents are. That could be through one of their own spells or the Mastermind's activatable ability. If you want to force the issue, a Howling Mine or Dictate of Crufix will go a long way toward filling your hand up nice and quick. Experimental Confectioner, in a year where our bellies were stuffed full of support for the food mechanic, is just the right spell to marry the food and aristocrat lifestyle. Besides the combo between the Confectioner and Peregrine Took, the amount of rectangles this card makes as you use your food is sure to satisfy your hunger for value and your hunger for victory. Ghoulish Impetus is the newest addition to the Impetus Enchantment Aura family and could realistically be a game-long headache for your opponents. The goaded death-touching creature is sure to be a nuisance and the reattaching choices you can make throughout the game should get the table talking and maybe gain you an ally. Master of Dark Rites is a darling piece if you are doing vampire, cleric, or demon things. There are very real worlds where you cast this turn 1, Bloodgast turn 2, and by turn 3, you've got the resources to cast an Omnixilus Unshackled, Micaeus the Unhallowed, or Nirkana Revenant. 3 additional black mana is so much. But the limits for what you can spend it on, as well as needing to sacrifice a different creature, puts this firmly in super fun territory. Bitter Triumph is a combination removal spell and game plan enabler. If your life is a resource, like in Rowan, or you're doing reanimator stuff and want to get your thick boy in the graveyard, or you're doing madness stuff, Bitter Triumph is everything you need, and more. Nazgul, with the nine printings representing each one, growing in strength as more wraiths come under your control, while allowing nine of them in your commander decks, is among the best, if not the best, flavor decision of 2023. Back when this got released, these uncommon spells were hitting $20 on the market. Even still, they are closer to $10 than 5 And honestly, I can't blame y'all for that. These were a home run. Hunting Velociraptor, in a year chock full of dinosaurs, rounded out that creature type with its game-changing prowl ability. 
While 3 mana to cast a dinosaur is welcome at any point in the game, there are scenarios where you can play turn 1 Velociraptor into any dinosaur you want after combat on turn 2. I can't say that's the most realistic position you'll find yourself in, but with the high cost of dinosaurs, the Prowl ability is going to put in work during your games. Clever Girl Reckless handling is the exact kind of tutor I like to see. Functionally working like Gamble, you get an artifact card from your library and then discard a card randomly. I love that this lets you shoot your shot to get your game plan into full swing, like Krark wanting his thumb back, but on account of you potentially discarding the card you tutored for, it reduces the linear element tutors can bring to Commander. Riders of the Mark offers a very fast top end for human tribal decks that keeps on coming back for more. If you're familiar with this kind of deck, getting six dorky human 1-1s is not the tallest task, so this 7-4 Hasted Trampler will often cost a single red mana. Furthermore, you'll be packing plenty of Lord effects that pump up the power and toughness of humans. So when this creature does return to your hand, creating more humans equal to its toughness, you may find yourself with 6 or 8 of them, giving you even more insurance of this very cheap casting cost next turn. Solfem Mayhem Dominus is the face of what I found to be a fantastic year for burn in the commander space. This is an archetype I explored more with the introduction of Fiery Inscription, but with Axanel and Imodane and City on Fire being printed this year, this kind of deck is as healthy as it's ever been and makes for some explosive gameplay. Song of Totentons is my top pick in red. As a standalone one red sorcery, it gives all the creatures you control haste, which isn't rocking me out of my socks, it has been done before, but is super helpful after resolving a spell like Rise of the Dark Realms. More than that, it also functions as an infinite mana outlet to hopefully win the game with an overwhelming swarm of rats. I was the player in Dishonored that put all the bodies in a closet for my rats to dispose of the evidence, so I admit I have some bias here, but I've also found this to be quite the satisfying way to win a game. Feasting Hobbit bring back the devour mechanic, and just like any good hobbit is devouring food instead of creatures. The three counters you get from each food is substantial and could easily power this guy up to an 8-8 early on in the game. But if you're later on in the game and your engine is roaring with food generators and token doublers, Proudfoot can one-hit KO your opponents. Because the kicker and the reason he makes this list is that he's functionally unblockable when he devours enough food. Ozolith the Shattered Spire is my own personal celebration that the OG Ozolith did in fact end up shattered in the Phyrexian invasion. For all you counter players out there, this thing does it all. It's got the hardened scales effect, which we all know is quite powerful, but it can also add counters through its tap ability, which can and will surprise someone with two extra power if they make a miscalculated attack. It can also cycle, so that's cool. Knight of the Sweet's Revenge turns all the food you've been making this year into green mana rocks. In plenty of cases, after you cast this for four mana, you'll be mana positive based on the foods already available to you. After you got your board fully established with creatures, it's got a built-in half crater hoof effect, elevating your creature's power and toughness based on how much food you've stockpiled. I'm totally into ramp and finishing power all in one package, so I'll let these sweets get all the revenge they want. 
Tyrannix Rex is a scary, nasty dinosaur and exactly what the doctor ordered. Poison counter enjoyers had themselves a year, and I would be remiss to ignore it completely. This dino is the perfect top end for those decks, able to punch through a whopping four poison counters on an uncounterable, ward four, hasted trampler. If I had to have a toxic end, I would very much like it to be in this creature's maw. Last March of the Ents is, funnily enough, another uncounterable spell. Ideally, you've got a creature with a big booty on the battlefield, so you can draw buckets of cards. But even if you don't, you can empty your hand of all creatures to put straight onto the battlefield. I know what you're thinking. It's kind of weird to print this card and then Galta Stampede Tyrant. And to that, I say, yeah, I totally agree. In any case, this one came first, has the upside of drawing cards, and features an iconic moment from Lord of the Rings. Abstruse Archaic has one of those copy ability abilities, but only from a colorless source. Designed to fight alongside the Eldrazi, famous for Annihilation, the use cases for this avatar reach beyond their grasp. If you've got a little Zenith Chronicler, for only one mana, you can draw double the cards when it gets triggered. The Archaic can also be used in conjunction with every other spell on this colorless list. Horn of Gondor, without any answer, is a very fast timer to end the game. Its tap ability, doubling your total humans, can start off fairly small. But as we learned from the rice on a chessboard, repeated doubling gets out of control. In strategies designed to take advantage of a wide board state of humans, this fits perfectly. Staff of Completion remains my favorite flavor card from All Will Be One, and slots in nicely for a handful of different strategies. I'm such a big fan of paying life to utilize this thing, because you're sacrificing yourself when you become completed, and there's no better representation of that than giving your life for it. The main uses are for the mana and to proliferate. So whether you're doing poison or super friends or minus one, minus one counters, the staff will be a welcome accessory. Millennium Calendar introduced a new win condition of getting 1,000 time counters on it to deal 1,000 damage to each opponent. Now, this isn't foolproof with spells like Teferi's Protection running around, but it's the next best thing. Truth is, 1,000 counters sounds like a lot, but with its built-in time counter doubling ability, you only need a handful of turns to reach your goal. In decks where you are planning to have large amounts of permanence to untap, the upside of including this spell almost certainly outweighs whatever you'll be replacing. Agatha's Soul Cauldron obviously goes hard with Agatha of the Vile Cauldron, but doesn't need her to be impactful. The mana fixing for abilities, Graveyard Hate, and Counters alone are all quite helpful, but that middle ability, that is where the real juice starts to flow. Exile Yawgmoth from your graveyard and put that counter on an Elvish Mystic, and suddenly your mana dork is not so dorky. The possibilities may actually be endless with this artifact, and that's why it rose to the top. Yargul and Maltani is so silly, it traverses the whole spectrum back into amazing. This 18 power creature is just a big meat stick, so the only thing you can do is treat him accordingly. There's the straight and narrow, where you can strap some equipment on him to do smash, but there's the other, more entertaining option of throwing him at opponents time and time again, with spells like Rite of Consumption, Sure Strike Trident, and Final Strike. 
Pack some effects like Not Dead After All, and you'll be living the best life that a meat stick can. Taunt from the Rampart is an absolute house in any meta reliant on creatures. Every creature you don't control are both goaded and can't block. Worst case scenario, some life totals have been reduced and nearly every creature your opponents control are tapped or dead when it gets back to your turn. Best case scenario, a player or two is knocked out. Spells like Obscuring Haze and Darkness have been used by your opponents to keep themselves alive, and you are one attack away from victory. Bernard Ginger Sculptor is in the business of making gingerbread cookies, and he boasts quantity and quality. He is the perfect home for the Splicer family, accelerates much more quickly than you might expect, and with his plus two plus two and trample given to golems, I've heard he's even made our favorite sad robot's frown turn upside down. The Ninth Doctor takes an important but often overlooked phase of the game and puts it front and center. This guy gives you an additional upkeep. Running this with Paradox Haze for even more upkeeps, and then spell after spell with upkeep triggers will start accruing you so much value you won't even know what to do with it. Bilbo, Birthday Celebrant, is the commander for which I have my most fond 2023 memory. I've got a video on this channel of an upgraded Food and Fellowship precon called Bilbo's Murder Party. And the first time I played with it, it did the thing, and ended up amounting to over 500 damage to each opponent. The aristocrat lifestyle isn't for everyone, but I can confirm, Bilbo thrives in nobility. Thank you all for watching the video. I hope your magic experience in 2023 was as great as mine, and I hope for you an even better one in 2024. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and remember to let me know in the comments all your favorites from the year. I'll catch you next time for some more Monkeying Around.